TV84 viewers, uh, viewers, we have Dane Waters from Punjab uh, Referendum Commission here with us. Uh, Mr. Waters, like, uh, can you please explain the process of referendum for the common people and how Punjab Referendum Commission is working with Six for Justice and this whole referendum campaign is uh, going? Oh, sure. So, so a referendum is when the people have the ability to speak their mind on a specific issue. It's like the right to self-determination. It's the ultimate tool around the world for people to speak their opinion on an issue. Uh, India will not allow, as of now, a referendum on this issue. So what the Sikhs for Justice has been doing is going around the world to the Sikh community, asking their opinion on the issue. Uh, the Referendum Commission was established to ensure that the votes were held in a very uh, free, fair, uh, manner and that's consistent with international norms and that's what we do as the commission. Uh, we don't take any specific issue, I mean, uh, uh, position on the issue itself. Uh, but around the world we've been traveling, following uh, and making sure that the votes are conducted properly and they've been doing a phenomenal job to ensure that the people vote uh, with full transparency and, and according to international norms. Uh, with the commission, like, was it constituted by Six for Justice or like how you guys came up with the commission with this idea and eventually you formed a commission, how did that came up? Well, my, yeah, well, my background is, has been in direct democracy issues. I've been doing it for over 30 years. Uh, about four years ago, it's hard to remember now, pre-pandemic, uh, we were approached by some individuals who wanted to do this referendum and they approached us to, to want to know, hey, we want to do this right. So uh, I, working with some other individuals, Matt, you know, Matt Quartrup and Paul Jacob and Bruno Kaufman, we decided to set up the commission uh, so that we could advise. I mean, we're totally independent. Uh, we're not funded by Seeks for Justice. Uh, we're, we're just completely independent, and we advise uh, on things that we like and we don't like when it comes to the referendum. Uh, going with your background, like as you said, you have been doing referendums or you have been associated with this movement like uh, for the past 30 years. Have you already done referendums in other countries or with other people, with other ethnicities or communities? Well, I've, I've monitored uh, referendums all over the world, but this is the first non-governmental referendum uh, at this, at this, on this scale that, that we've been involved in. And which is great about this, and one of the reasons we are very supportive of this process, is because there are a lot of groups out there who want to express their feelings about specific issues and there's no mechanism. So we are very optimistic that this process that Seeks for Justice started um, on the Khalistan referendum will be a model for others to use around the world to, to increase awareness of the plights of other minority groups out there that need to be recognized. Uh, well, can you please explain me a little bit about the types of referendums because you said this is non-governmental referendum, uh, no government is involved, India is will not never allow for this referendum to be held in India. So, and uh, the previous referendums you have been part of, they were government organized referendums. So what is the difference, like uh, technically speaking? Well, I've been involved in various types. For example, when, when Somaliland wanted to break away from Somalia, when they wanted to break into two, uh, I advised on the Somaliland referendum as a constitutional uh, amendment um, referendum was held in Somaliland. So I advised on that. It was not recognized by Somalia, so Somalia today still is, is joined, but, but there are, there are and that was actually sponsored by the government of Somaliland. So there's different iterations. There are those referendums like that are governmental, that are supported, supported by the government, that are funded by the government. Um, like you see here in California all the time, referendums and initiatives, those are binding and legally binding. You have that level. And then you have those that are sponsored, like for example, in Somaliland, where the people in that in the country want to vote on the issue, which is was the model that was going to be used for this issue in India. As I'm still remain optimistic that at some point in time India will come to their senses and say that you know we should allow the vote, but we'll see. Um, and then there are those that are when we say non-governmental, but are but are sponsored by in, by by certain ethnic groups, they want to make sure the world knows how they feel on this issue. And this is what's happening here. So there's different levels, but this one is extremely organized. Uh, it follows international norms. And uh, that's why we believe this is a model for other organizations and groups to follow.
what can the community expect from this uh, uh, Khalistan referendum campaign, that, which is non-binding? What can the people expect to achieve from uh, uh, this referendum campaign? Well, just look at yourself. I mean, you're out here, you're the media. You see tens of thousands of people out here voting on the Capitol lawns in Sacramento. So it raises awareness. I mean, people, people like in California now know of this issue. People in Canada know of the issue. People in the UK know of this issue. And so it's all about increasing awareness of the issue and the genocide and issues that took place in India regarding the Sikh community. So, number one, it's about education. And there's no better way to educate people than to hold events like this. That's number one. Number two is, you know, once all the votes are finished, you would think that when you have this many people coming out to vote that the United Nations will then take take a notice of it and say, listen, okay, well, the diaspora has shown that this is an issue that they're interested in, and so there we should pay attention to it. I mean, without, without these types of votes around the world where you have hundreds of thousands of Sikhs voting, the United Nations would never even consider this issue. But this is a way of showing the United Nations and other governmental entities around the world that this is a serious issue and they should listen to it. Uh, that's true, like, uh, as you said, that this is a campaign and eventually it's about creating awareness and eventually if we come to that point, maybe we will be able to put like an extra effort into that and maybe UN or any other country can recognize this campaign and we can take it like a further step ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, in absence of doing this, there would probably be very little doubt, very little interest in the United Nations in doing anything. This is, this is like you have the Sikh community showing that there, there, there's a lot of support for this. You have the countries like, you know, unfortunately the assassination took place in Canada, but it, it, it raised the awareness of the issue. The Canadian government recognized that, the, you know, the Sikhs have the right to this referendum. And so the, all of this together is going to be added force on the United Nations to take action, hopefully. So, but without it, it, there would be no opportunity for that to happen. So it's one of those things about pushing it. I mean, it's, it's an uphill battle. There's no doubt about it. But the reality is without it, it would be even, even a tougher battle. So this is incrementally making it more likely that you can get the United Nations to push for a referendum in India. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Waters. Thank you for talking with us. Thanks a lot.